Hi folks, I'm the bald guy and these are bald guy basics. I wanted to show you something. I'm in the shop kind of piddling today and I wanted to show you something about that you can do with your tools. Now, if you carry a lot of tools around your waist, uh, a, a good tool holster is great. Uh, a carpenter's holster, which has multiple slots in it is a great thing, but sometimes uh, I'm not a carpenter, so I don't carry a lot of tools. So sometimes maybe I want a utility knife and I've got, I've got a couple of them here and I, I made myself some very rudimentary um, sheaths for them. And you can tell this was the first one I ever made and I, I was trying to figure out, do I want to glue them? Do I want to use rivets? Or in this case, I actually um, drilled holes and, and used some twine to sew it. But you can make up your own mind on how to do things, but I want to teach you today how to start with a flat piece of leather and to make a belt loop. Now, you can have belt loops. Let me see, I've got one over here. Uh, I've done a lot of experimenting here. And here's one that I, I cut, since this is really thick and stiff leather, I, I cut a piece and you can see the spacers I put in there and I used um, construction grade gr Gorilla Glue. Uh, it works, it's not. I don't know how it would hold up under really hard pressure, under duress, if I were to get it snagged on something and to pull it really hard. I'm just not sure if that epoxy will hold. But it's done so well so far. But for a belt loop, that's where the pressure is. There's, there's no real pressure. I've got this epoxy around the edge here. And this one works really well. This is a really old utility knife, by the way. The blade runs the length of it. You uh, loosen the set screw and just pull it out and you can put it on the grinder. So it's not a razor knife, but it is super tough. So I, I really like it that, for that. But I want you to notice the difference in these two sheaths and I'll, I'll show it to you sideways. Look at how this particular sheath, the belt loop stands out and retains its shape. What I did with this one is simply cut two, I did with both of them, I've cut two slits uh, with enough width that, and this is my butch stick, I'll tell you about that in a little bit. But that's representing my belt and you put it through there. There's a couple of things you can do to get a, a much nicer fit. And to do that, what I'll do is, is show you on this flat piece of wood. The tools that will be handy, you need a, a small container. Um, and, and I'll show you what size container this is. I ended up soaking this piece. So I needed something just big enough that I could fill with the, the appropriate liquid uh, and, and put it down into there. You know what that is? That's a container from my little dog's supper. It's, that's his dog food. Wash them out. They make great little project bowls. You're going to need some rubbing alcohol, some just standard grade isopropyl alcohol some water, a container, a piece of leather, uh, a razor knife is gonna be great. And it's not a bad idea, although this job probably is a little big for Q-tips, but Q-tips make great applicators and you don't have to, generally you don't have to go out and buy them. So what we're going to do is to show you how to cut, you don't need to be shown how to cut a couple of slips, but to make a belt loop, in any standard piece of leather. And this leather is, let's see, where's my ruler here? This one is, it's, it's an eighth of an inch. You can tell I don't read rulers all the time. So it's thick enough that it's, it's fairly stiff, but it, it retains some flex. And all I'm going to do is to, to mark a slot where I'm going to make my cut. I'm going to use my butch stick to do that. Make sure that my cuts are about the same length. And first step, cut along the dotted line. So I want to use my razor knife. And when you're cutting leather, it's really nice. You kind of, it's really easy if you just kind of scour yourself a, a path. So I don't make a very deep cut, but then my blade will ride that path and I just keep cutting and you'll feel it go through. I 
always have you a good cutting surface underneath it. And I just went to the dollar store and got me a, a, a a dollar or a dollar and fifty cutting board because it works so well Let's see if I got one not quite my eyesight is certainly not like it used to be for these little fine razor knife cuts all right, you see my two incisions here, but you can see there's nothing here in terms of, of space. And yes, I can push this open. Butch stick, made by my friend Bush. That's how it got its nickname. I'm gonna use it for my belt. I might have to expand this just a hair. But what I want you to see when I do this, not only am I distorting my belt loop, I'm also distorting this side. So, what you want to do is to be able to stretch this middle section and once it has stretched then you can mold it into place i've already shown in another video how you can mold leather to fit by soaking it in water and then forming it it'll be a lot softer and then when it dries it dries hard which is what we have here but i'm not going since this is just 1 8 inch leather I'm not gonna get away from some deformation along the, the body of this thing. And this is where I would glue a, a sheath on top of this or, or sew it in. But what I want to do is to stretch this section so that I can get it to deform and have less deformation on the body of my sheath. That's where your rubbing alcohol comes in. A really neat characteristic of rubbing alcohol is that, and let me, I'm not sure if I'll need a, a paper towel or a Q-tip here, but by applying rubbing alcohol directly onto the leather, it will allow the leather to stretch. You can do wonderful things where before you might have to figure out a way to sew or, or somehow um, glue material together i can actually move material here yeah point it on might not be a bad thing either but i am going to really work in some rubbing alcohol and, and you can see what i'm doing here i'm just rubbing it in to this area that i want to stretch and wetting it down this is not a an operation that you have to worry about being terribly precise about. So I've done that and already, you, you, you can probably see there the depth to which it is penetrating. I've, I've already done that and it stay, look how it's staying in place already. I'm gonna give it just a few more. I'm gonna be a little more precise on this side. I'm going to wet this side in the appropriate area so I get penetration from both sides. Which will allow me to shape my leather this way a little more efficiently. you to notice that the area of the greatest deformation is is on the edges so I'm going to go back and, and kind of wet the edges even more so this is going to allow me to stretch this and then I can weight this down to kind of minimize the amount of deformation that I'm getting from the body of it, where I really don't want deformation. 
And what do I have that's good and heavy? <laughs> Just so happen to have a people a couple of pieces of uh, raw cut wood. Sometimes when I'm in the woods, I'll find a piece of material that I'm cutting firewood out of, and I'll go, actually, that wood, once dried, will be really handy. While I, I let that set, I cut some pieces out of this before allowing it to dry. And, and look how they were straight as an arrow when I cut them on the bandsaw, but look how they've distorted. Uh, you just, you're learning how materials move, wood, leather, those kind of things. So what I'm gonna do, I'm, I'm gonna leave this for a while. And when I have allowed this to stretch for a while, I'm simply gonna take some plain old bottled water and I'm going to fill it to within just a hair of the lip of this thing. And I'm going to lay my product right there. And I'll, I'll leave my butt stick in to keep the shape that I want. And I'll let that soak uh, long enough for it to get all the way into this material. Five minutes. Uh, if your leather's a little thicker, six minutes, seven minutes. But you, you get the idea. You don't have to do this overnight. You soak it until it penetrates the pores of the leather. Then you simply take it out. And of course, I'll leave the, the stick in and allow this thing to dry for about 24 hours. And when it is dried, that's going to stay in place. And, and you can tell by how I'm hitting that. That's, that's really firm. Now, uh, the leather here is eighth inch thick, but over here it's double where I glued two pieces together. So it helps with that deformation that I don't want in the body of this. You can make some really inexpensive and customized uh, sheaths and, and other things for tools that will apart from being useful on a day-to-day -day basis. When I use this is usually when I'm, I'm going to be on the tractor, I'm going to be away from the house, but I'm going to need a utility knife for some reason, uh, something bigger than a pocket knife, which by the way, if you're a guy and you're out working, if you don't carry a pocket knife, I don't understand you. <laughs> yes, it's a throwback from bygone days, but I think you really ought to do it. And just in the time we've been talking, get the sawdust off here. I can tell that my alcohol, which, you know, it has a, a, a it's easy to evaporate, low evaporation point. So the, the alcohol is already fading away. So let's see if you can see this. I'm simply going to do exactly as I told you. I'm going to fill this. I don't want it to overflow, but it's not going to hurt anything if it does. That's why they make paper towels. Yep. You see, I touched it and how quickly that wet just the right spot. I'm going to have to move my butch stick. I used to work with butch many years ago. We live in different parts of the state now, so we don't see him, but I think of him every time uh, I use these sticks. So now I'm simply gonna let this soak for about five minutes. I'm not gonna sit here and talk to you in five minutes, but when this five minutes is up, I'm basically done. I'm through with the water. I'll just set it up and I don't have, here's a, another butt stick. I will leave this new one I'll simply leave it and I won't, you don't need to have a knife in it. Although if you're worried about deformation, that might give you a little uh, extra bracing on it. But I'll simply leave this for 24 hours. Um, uh, it's been a, February, March has been exceedingly warm here, but today is, it's just cool enough to have a low fire. You can even take it not too close, but near enough to the fire that uh, you get a little bit of that ambient heat uh, to help it dry a little faster, but just don't get in a hurry. And when you're done, you're gonna pull this out and go, wow, I did it. So alcohol to stretch, water to shape and make it retain the, its new shape. So you have to have something physical to hold us. That's what the stick's for. One other trick, sometimes you'll get grades of leather uh, that you want to soften. Uh, it, it help with not just bending, but the feel of it. 
One last item around the house that will help that. I've probably got some over here in the cabinet, but I'm not gonna take a break to go find it. Talcum powder, baby powder. If you'll take a piece of leather that is a little rough to the touch and you need to soften it, I keep a, a, a sandwich size Ziploc bag for projects this size and I just drop them down. And of course there are bigger bags for bigger things. You can just take it and rub it on, uh, but I just drop it into a sandwich bag, something this side with talcum powder and let that talc get into the pores of the leather. And uh, it's talc is basically a lubricant, a dry lubricant. And it allows that, to, you, you'll be quite surprised how much difference it makes in the feel of the thing. So it's just some little tricks for shaping your leather. And um, if you have something that you made you really proud of, send me a message or send me a link to it. I'd like to see it. This is the bald guy and these are bald guy basics. I hope this helps.